competition. So we are honored to showcase a school leader, principal, homeschooler, children's author, and a storyteller. She believes in teaching by understanding the individual mindsets and capacities of the learners of her schools. She has worked with over 2,000 children and coached, trained, and mentored over 500 teachers so far. She has contributed immensely for the children from the marginalized communities in the field of education and has revived a couple of schools in Hyderabad, India, empowering the children by providing an opportunity for autonomy, creation, experimentations, and flexibility is what is she passionate about. She is Toral Shahar representing India. Hi, Toral. Hi, Anusha. Thank you so much for having me over. It's great to be part of this community of uh, global in education influencers. Thank Hello, you. everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, Toro. We are really excited for your session. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anusha. So um, when, I, when I saw this uh, on the social media, I was thinking, what should I talk about? Something that I'm really very passionate about. And that is my baby project uh, called Rishya, which is celebrating individuality. So let me start by telling you what is Drishya and how did this come about? So I'm, I'm a mother of two children. So when my first son was born, um, you know, like how every mother reads stories to her children to put them to bed or to encourage them or to pep them up for some or the other reason, uh, stories are being told. Um, so I noticed that my child at, um, at the age of six had too many questions. So that was kind of, kind of at that time frustrating me that that's breaking the flow of my story. But that was a blessing in disguise for me because that's when I came to know the thought processes of how a child thinks, of how a child learns and all of that. And that is when I realized that why don't I um, do a project, a pilot project with a few of his friends who would be interested in interesting stories. So um, I started with something like a very basic um, folk tales of India and also then went about going into uh, the epics of India that is Mahabharat and Ramayana. So um, when I was doing these stories with them uh, I left it open completely to the children to come up with uh, their own questions and no question is labeled as uh, oh how can I ask this kind of a question? Or uh, will I be judged if I ask this kind of a question? So it was completely up to me where I learned a lot myself how to self-control so that I don't react immediately. So that there are no immediate reactions from my side about, oh, that's a very good answer or that's a very good question or, or something like, um, what makes you say that? Oh, I don't like that. So um, these were some things which made me really be aware of, be very cognizant about how am I reacting. In a way, I became extremely mindful and uh, to say that, no, I should probably just acknowledge or just listen to them about what they have to speak or what they have to question about. So that's how I started doing this storytelling sessions, which went about um, getting deeper into Drishya. So Drishya in, in means perspective. So uh, in Drishya, it is basically an opportunity given to children to voice out their thoughts, opinions, ideas, and perspectives on the topic which is discussed. So you would ask me why why take stories? I mean, um, from a new age, from a, a newborn to an adult, who doesn't like stories, right? And also about stories that we already know. So it's not that uh, the stories that we already know we are done with and we are uh, being with that. It is, uh, it is more about how we go deeper into the stories, what we make of those stories, 
and it's only through discussions that we know the story better and we know the story better simply because we learn from each other by hearing each other's perspectives and it is this uh, playground which is a safe playground that is provided in drishya where i as the facilitator and not the teacher uh, open this playground to children to voice out their thoughts without any biases or prejudices because each of us have lot of um in a say inhibitions or some kind of fear that we don't want to let out so in in this entire journey of about 4 years now in drishya i have learned so much that i have written almost 5 uh, to 6 documents about my learnings what have i learned from my children and it has been uh, as a teacher it has been an uh, very exciting and a fulfilling experience so um if i have to say about what is drishya in a nutshell it is basically uh, the aim is to foster well being among students by self reflection so there are a lot of self uh, there are a lot of reflective exercises uh, that are done and in this i engage the students by asking open ended questions and uh, there are discussions there are debates to enhance the students understanding and the ability to think critically the other aim also of drishya is to uh, make the student responsible for his or her own learning journey and uh, equipping him or her with a sense of freedom to make choices now how does that happen so um Uh, usually in all my classes i ask children to uh, come up with their own uh, way of conducting the class so uh, it is completely up to them complete autonomy is given where they were, they say that ma'am can we can we do something like this instead of doing a storytelling can we show some kind of a video and after the video we can show some we can ask some questions which are very engaging uh which would again be very open ended and then we can do some kind of art so uh what we are trying to do here is uh, we are trying to provide um uh, an opportunity uh for them to express themselves differently so some children are good in art so they way, the way they express it uh, differently is you know by drawing some are very good in speaking so they would like to take the storytelling part of it and then some are very good by way of writing so they do the uh, creative writing part of it um and also uh, some are very good by just pictorially representing something so there are these symbolizing activities that are done so in a way how would you symbolize friendship who is your best friend so as we go about exploring the story in detail the stories are being told in the class either by way of uh, sharing a text they read and come or it is uh, done by way of uh, story narration in the class or it is very rarely done by showing a video or uh, uh, somebody else narrates it or it is enacted out so these are the different methods of narrating the story in the class after which the story is completely dissected and analyzed by all of us and uh, nobody can um, um say that hey you are right hey you are wrong uh, i completely disagree with you uh, on that uh, they are obviously welcome to express their opinions but as long as they validate it um, they can because nothing is categorized as black or white we are all, there are all shades of gray and uh, everything is welcome in the sense all answers are welcome so here we are uh, it's providing a complete environment of celebrating mistakes and celebrating different views and um, working upon them and that's how learning happens right because it's only when you hear each other's perspectives you come to know oh this is also possible there is a possibility of creating something like this so this is the way uh the sessions um of uh, drishya is conducted and the whole premise is 
of um, making children self aware by way of stories and by doing a lot of self reflection um, by uh, empathizing with characters so there are many activities that are included in this one is called the i activity so if i have to explain that we take a particular character from the story and from that story uh, you need to um, talk like that character or think about what the character has gone through in that story and and like the character um, uh, you have to speak like that so i for example we have we have just completed the ramayana so we say something like this i as ram um, uh, feel like a leader uh, since i have uh, got my wife back with the help of the entire vanar sena from kishkinda and getting the brother of my enemy Ra uh, ravan that is vibhishan so things like that um in in the i activity what happens is the child really thinks about getting into the shoes of the character uh, in and uh, also voices out what he exactly feels in that situation so in in uh, this is done at the end of every class and he can pick any character that was discussed in that particular session so when this happens he has to really think that which is that character which really struck me hard and which i am really influenced by or uh, who really motivated me who was that character that really um, uh, was a highlight for me in this entire session and why was it so subconsciously there is lots working around in the minds of uh, these young children where they do this kind of critical thinking and they come about to say it's okay if i am um, if i feel for a person who's not so called the hero of the session um so it had happened a couple of times if um, i would say um, you know there are, there is always um, a protagonist and an antagonist in every story right so yeah, and so do these epics have to but uh, whenever i have uh, touched base upon any of the stories from indian history or the epics um, none of uh, the characters are characterized as heroes or villains so we look at with a very very fresh new perspective that we are visiting this story for the very first time let's completely completely forget about what we already know and uh, uh leave all her inhibitions behind and let's see the story from where we are from level 0 and um it's very difficult to do that because they do come back and say that oh but uh, we had discussed this last time how about that uh, we we did speak about it i i know about this but then i have to tell them that no no let's not go back to what we already know let's talk about what we know right now so there is there is lot of unlearning uh, that that takes place during this session and it's still taking place for me uh, even now and um, uh, the children also learn to think for themselves so in this entire exercise the the main takeaways are um empathy that is the main thing um empathizing with the situation empathizing with the character and obviously listening now these are some things as we are all aware and being in the uh, education field as we know that education is undergoing a huge paradigm shift everybody is talking about uh, social emotional um, awareness and learning and mental well being and things like that this is done in a very very fun manner where uh, a safe environment is provided to the child to really voice out what he really thinks and feels i mean imagine um, a child who doesn't speak much to his parents or doesn't let out his emotions very well he would do that probably quite 
easily or little easily i would say uh, with strangers and uh, he he doesn't know who the opposite person is and so that's why it makes it easier for him to uh, let out what he wants to um, uh, what he really feels about that topic so that way uh, by not reacting at all but responding to what children uh, have to say makes a whole lot of difference and that is what i have observed learned and um, experienced in all the sessions that have been conducted so far and it's been a very very content and a fulfilling experience so um, in this um, uh, in the curriculum that is designed uh, by me it is basically encouraging children to uh, be creative because when you are expressing you are really expressing what is coming from inside and each of us is unique each of us is really different in our own way and that's how creativity comes out to think creatively and also to express themselves with freedom so they are taught to give good reasons for their decisions and completely not worrying whether their answers would be right or wrong so uh, it is a way of nurturing them and really valuing their individuality of every child by honoring their perspectives so uh, it is always said that you know these epics uh, provide lot of values and morals and things like that right so uh, my uh, uh, take on this is that yes stories do give lot of values but the way i approach it i in fact ask children to um uh, give the values that they have derived from the story it is not just because of learning the values part of it that we are touching base upon these stories but it is about more or less how you feel and think and uh, what are your views on the stories is what is being discussed so um uh now why stories why should we take stories to understand this it is quite simple it's because um stories interest everyone and anyone and it is very critical in uh, shaping a person's understanding of the world so uh, we always try to relate somebody's story in our lives you know what would have i have done in this particular situation how would i have uh, done it better maybe so these kind of questions when um, uh, children are asked and they are not asked once but they are asked multiple times they try to relate whatever they are doing even if they are reading a book on their own or they are they have watched a movie or they have played a game they are very mindful uh, to um, to reflect upon and to introspect later when they do the journaling at night that what really touched me what is it that uh, really uh i i didn't like about or what is it that i am sad about so that way stories um are i would say a very interesting medium uh, and a very easy medium to teach such uh, values to them and to teach these skills which are um, to do with critical thinking decision making problem solving all of those so um so far the kind of uh, modules that have been covered are uh, more or less uh, indian history and the epics and some of the folk tales and um, uh, this this whole thing of celebrating individuality where i get different responses every time from each of the students is is something that i celebrate and that's why i call it celebrating individuality so in this as i said and as i mentioned earlier that um i don't call myself as a teacher at all uh, it's very difficult uh, for me to say that i am uh, their friend nobody would consider me as their friend in the first place because uh, we know that in every session or in every class if you are going to a class it is more or less about um, you know a teacher being there there is a central figure so i try to break that uh, norm um by again not being over friendly because that again uh, is quite made up and artificial so um i let the children just speak 
uh, I try to take a topic which is probably current affairs and um, so uh, take the story and from the story uh, touch base upon something which is going on currently so that they could relate to it or if it is not uh, something from current affairs something of their interest and then um, when something is taken of their interest I let I let the forum open and let them talk about amongst themselves so when this happens and I am sitting quietly and listening to them uh, that is when uh, they feel that okay I think this is a platform where we can express our opinions very openly and uh, there's nobody to judge us here and there is nobody here to uh, see uh, uh, whether we are right or wrong or uh, to give us remarks as I'm an intelligent child and uh, I'm a below average child and things like that. So um, a lot of uh, freedom is given in terms of um, asking the child to prepare and come and um, and then uh, present their own class on their own so when this is done they feel that the sense of ownership they want to present their class in the best way possible and in the most creative way possible so i am just a guide to tell them that probably these are the finishing touches that you could do to your class and then probably um, uh, you know uh, what do you think uh, because children have already, your friends have already gone through all this earlier. What is it that you could do something differently so that uh, they would be engaged? Because some of the sessions are online, some of them are offline. Uh, so they design accordingly. So for online, it's again very difficult to engage them because um, uh, either their cameras are off. And if their cameras are off, do you really know whether they are listening to you? So you have to be really aware uh, the kind of activities that you are conducting are conducive enough uh, to have it for online. And if it is for online, uh, how, how can you make it really interesting so that they really listen to you? And uh, how would you again verify their understanding? So they really go into the shoes of the teacher and uh, think that, oh, it's really difficult to do something like this. That's when they again empathize with the teacher. And so this is the way um, uh, when they teach, first of all, they learn a lot. When anybody, anybody teaches you, first of all, the first thing that you do is you learn. So this is the best form of learning where children are given the opportunity to teach. And that is something I really believe in. The other thing that is done is peer-to-peer -peer learning as well. So when they are teaching and they are conducting the sessions, there is a lot of learning that happens between them. There is a lot of back and forth that goes between them. So I, I don't try to intervene um, uh, between the discussions or uh, when they are trying to uh, speak on something in depth. Um, I, I just let them speak. And that is when I, I make my notes and I write down that what are these thought processes of each of these children. And um, after doing a lot of uh, writing and through many sessions, I come to know ultimately what is the thought process of the child. And in the last session which is conducted, parents are invited. And um, when the parents are invited, they too come to know that these are all the things that my child has spoken about. And this is his final take on the entire epic or the stories that were being discussed. Or, and that comes as sometimes as an aha moment for the uh, parent also. Is this the way my child answered? Is this the way my, my child spoke? Is this his thought process? So these are some of the things that um, really surprises them. And it comes as a surprise to the child himself sometimes. It has happened so many times that um, he says that um, I don't know how I'm uh, able to speak so much where I, I really felt that I was so shy. But now um, because of this environment, I'm, I'm quite open and free to talk whatever I want. So when we talk about... Um, 
social emotional and get getting out of um, um, uh, the, you know the mental wellness and uh, talking about mental wellness sorry and uh, mental well being emotional well being uh, i feel that um, my course was not designed with this purpose but i i feel at the end of it this is the by product that i am getting and uh, i'm quite uh, happy with it and uh, the kind of uh, encouragement uh, uh, just by way of children showing up in each and every class um, is is a testament to um, the kind of uh, classes that are being conducted and it's been done the way uh, i had projected it to be so um so in this uh, this whole particular uh, uh, platform of drishya i i uh, say that i there is no teacher as such everybody is a teacher here or everybody is a learner that is one there is lot of exchange that takes place and it is because of ex the exchange and the interactive sessions that are that the learning happens so in that case when there is lot of interaction first of all you have to be attentive you have to be listening and that is a very important skill that i believe that these days all of us should be having as a parent as an educator as a student listening being the most important skill nobody gets rewarded for listening right everybody gets rewarded for other skills public speaking or problem solving uh, but uh, listening often gets ignored so um in in listening uh, if i i tell them that if you don't listen you will probably lose out on most of it so they um it's very difficult when it comes to online because during pandemic um a um, lot of students through word of mouth uh, uh, joined in and it was all from uh, geographically other places so it had to be online so um, one one rule for my class was all cameras on otherwise i wouldn't know that you are there and because it is all cameras on you need to be interactive and even if you are not interacting it's fine just listen because listening and observing is something that all of us really need and there is one person always in the session who writes down notes that this is what happened in the class today this really went well this really didn't go well so we call that as meta so uh, i think we adhered to the the time schedule as we had decided um i think we went beyond time so you know children learn all these uh, skills of day to day organization or planning at a very early stage so i try to uh, bring in all these points all of them together and um it's not that uh, i i want that you know i want a planning skill organization skill things like that but the whole curriculum is designed in a way that uh, the all these things just uh, are a by product you know it's um, uh, it's just a matter of fact so to say uh, it's not like you know it's been uh, uh, decided beforehand that i want children to have critical thinking skills i want children to have public speaking skills it's just that it comes about so it's beautiful to uh, to just um, as i was listening to some of the other sessions earlier uh, this morning i i heard that um uh, some of the um uh, i think paula uh, was mentioning about listening um to our children um and also i heard sita mentioning the same so um here in drishya uh, i celebrate individuality of the child by listening to them they need to be listened and they need to be heard that's all they want because um they don't want any of the advisors they don't need any of your counseling that is the last thing they would need and i feel according to me they don't even need that they are intelligent enough to find out on their own so it is our responsibility to just give them a listening shoulder and that's it that's what they want so it, i was quite happy to know that we all are aligned and we are all thinking 
you know, on the same page, especially when it comes to listening. Now, when it comes to self-analysis, there is uh, uh, there are there are some exercises that we do for self-analysis, uh, where we say that there is a lot of role plays and a lot of skits that are done because these epics are all about um, uh, you know a lot of drama is there and children love to enact. Now, how does that acting come about? Now, that acting again comes about uh, when you uh, are empathizing. How do you act well? You act well only when you empathize with that role in the story. So I tell them that what do you really think? How if, if Sita were alive right now or if Duryodhan were alive right now and this, this is the situation, get into the character, make up your lines. This is the story, make up your lines. So when they are doing that, they are first of all learning how to write, number one, on their own, to make up their own dialogues. And then how do you really act? When you are acting, you are really emoting. You are emoting that situation. So how, how do you bring about that emotion? How, how is it that he is feeling right now? So Duryodhan has thrown the dice. He has won the game. How do you really think he is feeling right now? Let it out. You are really happy? Let it out. You know, Sita is really sad. She has to go through the fire. How do you think she's feeling? Is she really doubting her husband? Let out, let out that emotion. So this is when, you know, acting really helps when they are, uh, acting really helps with emotions, with dealing with emotions, recognizing the emotions and labeling them. Yeah. So um, these are, uh, these are uh, really very, very important concepts that can be taught to children at a very young age. And um, I've had students come back to me and say that um, you have really made me express because I really didn't know this side of mine at all. I really didn't know that uh, this side of mine exists. So um, as J.D. Krishnamurti says, uh, that education is nothing about is nothing but discovering yourself it's a self discovery process so that is what i believe in completely and that is what i feel that first of all the child should be given the opportunity to know who he is as a person and my mission of drishya is to provide exactly that i'm still learning i'm still getting there but that is what I want. I want the child, I want every student to know who he is as a person. And in this entire process, whenever I take this, these different cohorts of children, I feel I, I not only grow, but I know so much about myself in every session, session by session or cohort by cohort. There are so many things that I learn about myself. And that's why I have, I have made all these four or five documents so far about just myself, what have I learned about myself in these sessions and through the stories and through these group of children who were with me and what have they taught me. So um, uh, a teacher is uh, always a learner in, in this particular um, platform of mine. And I, I treat myself, I, I tell them that I really don't know anything. I'm here to learn from you. And when I, I don't openly say that because that would sound quite funny to them, but I say it very subtly so that uh, they get a hang that, okay, maybe she also doesn't know, maybe she's open to ideas. So let's discuss it openly. So um, this is what um, Drishya is about. It's about uh, giving a voice to children uh, where they voice out their reasons and logic and um, express their thoughts and feelings without any biases. And, um, and they do it in a very, uh, in a way where they feel that they are not being judged. And there are not, no definite answers. All answers are creative and there are their own um, perspectives to it. And um, also a lot of self-reflective uh, exercises and questions are asked where they come to know a lot about themselves. And there is complete exchange and sharing of ideas 
and that is what learning is all about for example doing the devil's advocate you know why only question uh, the villains of the story why can't you question the hero why can't you question krishna or why can't you qu question ram for whatever he's done why why take them as gods in the story so uh, we completely uh, try to understand that why um, uh these characters just because they are written by the author should we take it uh, at their face value let's try to analyze and dissect the story to know really who these characters are and why they did what they did so um these kind of uh, things are done and um i think uh, this is about celebrating individuality and i think anusha i'm i'm done with my uh, bit on explaining this Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much, Toral. Thank you for your amazing presentation. Thank you so much, so much, so much for sharing about stories and how critical it is in shaping Christian's understanding of oneself. That was amazing. Thank you very, very much. And we do have people tuning in from all over the world for you. And we have a couple of messages. Messages. Uh, Richard, Richard Kalega writes, thanks for the presentation. As educators, we need to help our learners keep motivated. We can start by helping them set high efficacy. That is so true. Richard, thank you very much. And, and Francis O'Donnell writes, autonomy, unlearning, self, safe spaces and freedom to be oneself. Really valuable and powerful guiding principles for learning, uh, for learning experiences to all. Completely agree with it being difficult for children and teachers to unlearn and look with fresh eyes on stories, but a rewarding objective. Absolutely. So do you mind, do you, sorry, do you find it difficult to find time in the curriculum delivery for allowing learners time to be individual and creative? Uh, yeah, so that's when, you know, the, when the lesson plans are made, I try to have 15 minutes of buffer time <laughs> because uh, everybody wants to speak, especially when they get comfortable. They want to really speak and that takes a lot of time. And that's when I allow that time uh, uh, for them to talk on whatever they want. Because if that is not allowed and only one person is talking or if I am talking, then that is again going back to your conventional way of doing classes, right? Here, everybody speaks and everybody expresses individually. So that does take time. So in my lesson plans, whenever I make the plan, I see to it that 15 minutes extra uh, is allotted for questions, number one, because, oh, I completely forgot about questions. So questions are a must. Um, that is something that I compulsorily ask my students to do. They need to ask questions uh, based on whatever everybody is ask, uh, speaking about. So, um, and that helps them with reasoning. That really helps them to, uh, first of all, question because that shows, first of all, you're paying, atten uh, you paying attention, you are listening. Secondly, it shows that you're really interested and that interest is coming from curiosity. So you need to ask questions. I feel question, questioning is much more important and difficult than answering, right? So uh, in those 15 minutes of time, they need to ask questions and they need to express in the end with that I activity where I was talking about empathy, where they, they, feel, they have to express what they feel about that situation and that character in that session. So while designing the curriculum, I do take these aspects into consideration and then um, make the plan accordingly. So many a times the plan goes haywire because um, we just get delved into a lot of deep discussion and then uh, I don't want to kind of stop it. But wherever I could, I could stop and then move on with the rest of the plan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toral. I hope she answered your question. Francis, please let us know if you where are you very... Please let us know where you're tuning in from, Francis, if it's possible. Uh, yeah, I'm coming from Ireland. Um, Ireland. Yeah, so it's been 
really interesting to um to listen to you, Toral, and and hear everything that you're you're talking about. It's like you've got a whirlwind of good practices all wrapped up into like one one session. <laughs> I'm like, whoa! But um, time is definitely yeah a huge issue. I think in terms of the curriculum. So yeah, and I love how you said that your plan sometimes goes haywire because I think that's quite um yeah that's quite common. And it's that it's fitting that that time to to allow that individuality to come through is probably a big challenge. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you, Francis. And we have uh, yes, we yes. have Akhil who's saying epics are very powerful. Yes, uh, Akhil. I think you know any epic. If you take a Greek ep epic, also whether it's the Iliad or the Odyssey or all, there is so much to learn from that. And it's it's just that I feel that um there is a lot of debate that was going on in india also and a lot of discussion whether epics should be included in the curriculum uh, of schools um but i really feel uh, forget about the religion or whatever just any epic that is taken at its face value not even taking as i said anybody to be gods or the villains of it if you take the epic like that every epic is so interesting so insightful full of uh, all kind of traits you name courage love empathy forgiveness uh, strength valor all of it is there i mean what more you want otherwise you know for your child to learn it's all there all the characters are there so uh, i think yeah you thank you it. thank you so much Tora. i do have a question for you as well so my question is um, students in mass production model have often been treated in groups um, and often called by the numbers or categories they belong to. Um, this system is cost effective since individuals' characteristics are undermined. So doing adequate justice to individual uniqueness and celebrating individuality is really, really very costly. Since, um, since students' uh, individual interests have to be addressed by separate teachers or instructors. So how can it be possible for average schools? Oh, um, yeah, that is something I really need to think about because right now I'm focusing on a cohort only of uh, 15 children. I don't take more than that. And I haven't um, approached schools as yet. Uh, but if you ask me if this kind of a program can be included in schools, um, yes, very much, though I don't have the experience for it right now, uh, but uh, within a limited size, I would say. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's I think only the size matters here. Uh, firstly, because you want every child to be heard, number one, and every child um, to be valued. And that will not, you will not be able to do uh, your lesson plan if you are planning the lesson plan of one hour, 15 minutes, which I usually do. Uh, it will not be justified for those 40 children, where 40 is the average in India of a classroom. Uh, you won't be justifying all those 40 children. Otherwise, it would just be a lecture mode. So to get the opinions and ideas at the end of the session and during the session, I would limit the size of the class to only about 15. And that uh, is not viable for a school. So that's why I run these classes independently. And um, I'm, I'm testing the waters. Um, the waters have been tested, sorry. Uh, but now um, trying to get in more uh, children from all over the world is what my focus is. So far, children uh, have been only from India. but Knowing, as I heard, um, I think I heard uh, Sita said that, say that, uh, no, no, my earlier speaker say that, um, that diversity is something that we really um, uh, need to know. You know, it's the diversity, um, the, the cultural aspect that uh, we really need to understand from each other about. So that's my next focus. Talking about schools, yes, it is difficult. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toral. Thank you very much. That was really well put. Thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any more questions for Toral, if you are welcome to unmute yourself. 
And yes, yes, Francis says, yes, mass production and high stakes assessment are crippling individuality. That's so true. 40, a class size in India, it is 25 and 32 here in Ireland, which I think it is too big. A shift in educational systems required, required. That is so true, required. Thank you, Francis. <laughs> Thank you so much, Toro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any more questions for Toro, we do have another half and half. 30 minutes left for our another session. So the stage is yours, Toral is here. Please ha have your questions ready or unmute yourself. Uh, this is our final day of our Education Infants Global Conference. And we have another three speakers to go. Some amazing sessions lined up for you. Anybody? So Anusha, I had a question for you. Yeah, sure. Um, you do a lot of storytelling yourself. Yes, I do. Yeah. So what are your experiences when, uh, when you conduct these storytelling sessions and what is it that you want out of children? Well, actually, uh, the thing, it started when Gavin uh, started doing storytelling sessions and I was not a storyteller. I didn't, I didn't really used to see stories or bedtime stories or children's stories. I mean, I used to hear them, but it was not like my thing. I mean, basically because I'm a grown up, but, but I used to see see him do it and the way he does it and then it sparked me and I started reading my own stories and when I started my reading my own stories I went into the character I went into the personality I went into the messages for example for example tomorrow tomorrow I'm going to read I'm going to read this book the happiest boy on earth for my 365 day of consecutive story times so ladies and wow. gentlemen I've been doing it for a year now and Gavin started, uh, Gavin started this initiative uh, during the lockdown, COVID-19 lockdowns. And he did, he himself did it for 100 consecutive days. And when he didn't do it, I mean, he couldn't do it anymore. So when Cran Middlecourt stepped in as well, then we have Anna Bai stepped in. Then after that, I was like, why not? I want to do it. I want to learn how to do it. Then I started doing it and I'm loving it so much that it's already been a year and I've been doing it for one consecutive days sorry one year consecutively for 365 days so, so the my take is that for example the happiest boy on earth and now now this is the story of a boy and his journey his struggles his his everything his messages and it's just like when I read I just be this I be the boy and I I share the messages of empathy I share the messages of compassion and I see the messages of kindness and what, what what can we expect from my children? How how can how can they show compassion? How can they show empathy uh, in their in their lives, in the school days, or with their friends? And it's just it's amazing when you be the children and you read stories for them and they enjoy it and they're like, oh wow, yes, I feel the same way. I was like, you know, and making those voices, being the character, it just very very amazing it's just very very amazing I, I learned that from stories we can we can really embrace the messages of empathy kindness compassion they're not just words but they are real they are real and they exist and our children must know that and i feel i feel this so you are you all are welcome to um attend this event it's it's a simple zoom event i'm trying to do i'm just going to read this book and i'm going to be this boy and i'm going to read his story and actually he is a he is a it's a real life story so he is eddie and eddie lived with his family and adorable dashant lulu in the beautiful city of lechpeet in germany but one day into the sunshine of his childhood crept a dark heavy cloud not a rain cloud much more than that Adolf Hitler came to power. When Eddie was 18, he was sent to a concentration camp. A story of heartbreak, friendship, hope, and kindness. So I'm, I'm actually excited to be Eddie and, and see how he turns to be a great, happiest grandpa in the whole world. And that's Eddie, and that's Eddie, and that's Eddie, and that's Eddie. And now he's the happiest grandpa in the whole wide world. I'm trying to be Eddie. I want to be Eddie. So. For me, stories are really powerful and it, it can really change the world. It can really change the world and I, I love doing it. Thank you so much, Toro. Thank you so much for letting me speak. No, I can I mean, you're so lively and enthusiastic. With so much of enthusiasm, you're speaking. I, and I, I did uh, uh, see one of your sessions as well. 
so that is what i thought that you know i because we kind of are in the same category let me ask your views about um, you know how how do you feel when you exchange something with children based on stories and people so, ask me like people ask me and I, i've been told that i'm the only one in the whole wild world that's been doing this and consecutively doing this and now people people tell me like what when are you going to stop and what are you, what are you going to do then what's your motive and i'm like i just love it and i just do it every day and i don't know when i'm going to stop because i don't think i'll never will i just i i'm going to do it forever and ever and um it's just it's just very amazing and and i just would like to include this zoom link for you guys for tomorrow it's tomorrow at 7 pm australian eastern uh, australian daylight time sydney melbourne time so i'm in sydney i'm based in sydney so if you would like to attend and hear story of edi hear story of edi you are welcome to how can okay. i be the part of storytelling that is really wonderful question uh, see you well you can be part of educationinfluence.com it's a network of teachers like toral she is our influencer she is a part of our family and uh, so we we actually launched storytelling programs we came together for read for peace and we came together for we came together for ukraine so usually we do this kind of events so if you're part of our network we can include you in our storytelling sessions thank you so much thank you so much toral that was amazing If you have any more questions for Toral, this is the time, ladies and gentlemen. We do have fifteen fifteen more minutes left, so please do unmute yourself. Toral is here, and let me remind you that we have uh, we will be showcasing Toral's session on our platform as well, educationinfluence.com, and we will be emailing you with necessary links with all the details. I think Jyoti has a question. You, uh, Jyoti has a question. Okay. Um, let yeah. me just. Do you recommend me. any epics or stories which are not religion based? and could be introduced in an international mindedness school um uh, well as i said see um, if if you see these epics if if i come back to uh, ramayan and mahabharat uh, if you if you see it uh, well it is a hindu epic but it is up to the teacher or up to the facilitator how she takes it i uh, well i know um many uh, of the from the west who have taken these epics they have beautifully illustrated they have beautifully retold the story also so it's completely up to the school and the teacher how they want to take it but if you uh if you are specifically asking in general about stories and all well there is akbar and birbal uh, uh there is tenali raman then there is vikram and vetal then there are these uh, lovely stories from mulla nasruddin uh, which um, uh, there are it's a full treasure of stories and very intelligent clever stories that are uh, discussed that one can be discuss one can discuss in schools um, and uh, even you can take the greek uh, mythology uh, that is interesting as well the folk tales of india uh, that's nothing to do with uh, religion at all so it is completely i would say jyoti up to the um uh, the facilitator and the school how you see it how you perceive it because i don't see mahabharata and ramayana or even gautam buddha or anything to be like a buddhist or hindu or something like that it's it's very the facilitator has to be completely open minded for that to take any epic Thank you, Toral. Thank you, Jyoti. If you have any more questions, you may mute yourself, and the stage is yours. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much. Oh, we do have another question. So, Francis writes. um it's a well to do it sees mary said i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong it's to it to it easy to it easy mary says primary one grade one consists of ages 6 to 10 i currently have 184 grade one learners in the same class under the same roof classroom management is at hard times and then francis says that is a whole different context for learning plus class management is bound to play a huge role i taught in new zealand for a year and we moved from class 25 30 class to 90 plus collaboratively taught 
collaboratively taught classes, but we have buildings, technology, one-to-one -one devices, and with older ages, 13 to 19. How many teachers are allocated to the 184? Thank you for the participation. Thank you for the question.